What's up, NBA fans? What's up, all sports fans? This your boy, JB, host of the Behind the Bench podcast networking channel. Giving a shout out to the rest of the crew. I'm talking about Shy, Kelvin Jermaine, KB Film Room, Big Dog Talk Sports. That's right. That's right. And for everyone who's tuning in, we hope that you support Behind the Bench. Continue doing so. Become a subscriber or continue to subscribe. And let's make this show the best that it can be. Now, I know we are right in the heart of March Madness. The Final Four has been determined in men's basketball. As well as the uh, women's NCAA Final Four. But I want to talk about this real quick. I want to talk about this. Now, let me gather my thoughts here. Now, this is a list of the all-time leaders when it comes to total points scored in the playoffs. Now, surprisingly, I never would have imagined that the 10th all-time leader in points scored in postseason play in the NBA is Tony Parker. I never would have imagined that. But kudos to TP. Now, when you look at this list here, when you look at the leaders from number two to number nine, I want to show something. I want to prove something. When you look at number two, Michael Jordan, number three, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, number four, Kobe Bryant, number five, Shaquille O'Neal, number six, Tim Duncan, number seven, Kevin Durant, number eight, Carl Malone, number nine, Jerry West. So out of that list, you have two active players. Which, I mean, that's just that's just a uh that's just an accurate historical account of where things stand at the moment. But when you look at two to nine, there is a separation from Michael Jordan to Jerry West. Now, mind you, these are all time playoff performers who have won multiple championships or may not have won a championship, but was always on the verge of competing for one. From Michael Jordan to Jerry West, we're talking about a point differential of 1,530 points, separating the second all-time leading playoff score to the ninth all-time playoff leading score. That's realistic. Because when you take into account, well, first of all, okay, Michael Jordan won more championships than Jerry West, right? Uh, but Jerry West was one of the all-time leading uh, as far as uh, uh, average points per game in postseason play, averaging over 27 points a game. Now, when you account into uh, a longer playoff, uh, let me put it this way, playoff series, uh, was extended, and you know, th throughout the course of the past, uh, you know, 40, 40 uh, plus seasons, uh, instead of three rounds or, or two rounds or three rounds, the playoffs was extended to four rounds. And what used to be the best three out of five in the first round has been extended to the best four out of seven, which started around the, I would say that started around like the. Mid two thousands, maybe somewhere around that point. But what I'm trying, what I'm trying to allude to is, this is a realistic arc of playoff performance, where fifteen hundred points separating number two versus number nine. That's really in the grand scheme of things. 
That's not an enormous gap. We're talking about only 1,500 points separating nine players on the, uh, on the all-time list. Or eight players. But when you look at LeBron James, he has 8,000 career playoff points. So you mean to tell me he is over 2,000 points more than Michael Jordan in postseason play but from Michael Jordan to Jerry West, from two to nine, there is a separation of only 1,500 points. How in the world does a player sit atop the all-time playoff scoring list by 2,000 points, by more than 2,000 points? Especially when the number two guy has the highest career point per game average, not just in regular season, not just in the postseason, but in the finals. Something is wrong with this pitcher. You know what the answer is? See, this explains a whole lot of stuff right here. This explains a whole lot of stuff. Let's just look at these names again. Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan, Kevin Durant, Carl Malone, Jerry West. Then the guy who sits atop the list is more than 2,000 points more than the second person? Well, you know how that happened? It's because of... Manipulation is because of manipulating the system. It's because you're being allowed to manipulate the system. You know where I'm getting at? Because you was allowed to stack the deck for 15 straight seasons. From 2010 till now. Now, we're going to say 14 seasons because I want to be as accurate as possible because he's been in the league 21 years. So you give him his playoff statistics during his first run with Cleveland. You give him that because that's where he started his career at. No issue. No issue at all. But out of all these great players, the, whoever's sitting at the top of the list should not be 2,000 more points over the number two player when the differential between number two to number nine is 1,500 points. And then number 10 is Tony Parker, who is like 400 points less than Jerry West. It's because you was allowed to manipulate the system and stack the deck year after year after year after year after year from the summer of 2010 up until now where you stack the deck for one super team after the next move from one locale to the next where you playing with not just superstars fran other franchise level players all stars elite role players uh, one of the, the, the top five pure point guards in the league and Ray John Rondo coming off the bench. Uh, at the time, the most prolific three-point shooter in league history up until that point, Ray Allen. All the three-point shooters, the elite three-point shooters that you played with, uh, uh, from, from uh, uh, Carlos Arroyo to... Uh, this is from Miami up until now. I ain't talking about his first run in Cleveland. I'm not talking about that. Even though in 2009, 2010, they were stacking the deck. But I, I'm, I'm going to give him that. I'm going to give him that. Uh, you played with uh, 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 Mike Bibby, who could shoot the three. Then it went to Mike Miller, who once shot 50% from behind the arc for a whole season. Uh, Mario Chalmers, who was shooting 40% from three. 
uh, uh, Shane Battier who was shooting over 50, 40% from three. I meant to say uh, uh, Mario Chalmers, 40% from three. Uh, uh, then he, he can shoot, okay, he, he can shoot three-point shot. Chris Bosh shooting up behind the arc. Rashard Lewis shooting over 30, 37% from three. Then you go back to Cleveland, then, then your three-point lineup is even deeper. Iman Shumford, J.R. Smith, Kevin Love, Kyrie Irving, Kyle Korver, at the time when Cleveland acquired him, he overtook – no, actually, Kyle Corbin was the most prolific three-point shooter of the 2010s at the time that they acquired him. Channing Fry, who I believe during the postseason of 2016, I believe it was, he was shooting over 50% from three. So what happens is when you play, when you extract the top talent at, at, at certain positions – Two guard, forward, the forward position, and all these three point shooters, right? And, and, and then you you're depleting the talent pool, the top level talent of a conference. Well, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to make one deep playoff run after another consecutively, and this is what put them in position to take over the all-time playoff scoring mark. It was those factors. And, and, and when people say he went to eight straight finals, well, this is how he did it. So what I'm trying to get at is, man, now I can see if he naturally became the all-time three-point, I mean, uh, all-time uh, score in a uh, uh, playoff, in the playoffs, if it was naturally, it wouldn't be to this extent. It'll be within that range of, okay, you look at Jordan. You look at Michael Jordan. He got 5,987 career playoff points. The, the, behind him is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 5,762. That's like a 200 point, a little over 200 points. Then Kobe Bryant, 5,640. So Kareem got about a th 120 some more points. Then from Kobe Bryant to Shaquille O'Neal was about uh, 400 points. Then from Shaquille O'Neal to Tim Duncan, we're talking less than 100. Then from Tim Duncan to Kevin Durant, it's like uh, about 250-ish, somewhere around there. Well, no, that's about 300. Then from Kevin Durant to Carl Malone, we're talking uh, a little over 100. And then from Carl Malone to Jerry West, that's about 300 or so. You see, that's a natural, that's a nat natural differential. So when you start talking about you're 2,000 more points than the next person who's number two? Who won six championships? Something is wrong. Some, it's called manipulation. He wouldn't be sitting 2,000 points. I don't care who it is. Michael Jordan, he retired. He didn't retire 2,000 points or, or more than the next guy. Who was Kareem Abdul Jabbar at the time at the number two spot, all time playoff scoring? Michael Jordan was sitting there two two thousand more points. This is what happens, man, when you get to manipulate the system, man, and history gets distorted. So what I'm trying to say is, when you deplete a conference of the uh, uh, top uh, 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 talent pool of the conference, that's going to make it easy for you to make extended playoff runs. Where your level of degree of difficulty, you practically eliminated it. Where you may face one so-called threat in, during each playoff run. Or on a year-to-year -year basis where, you know, like, uh, uh, you look at last year, Denver had to go through a, a talented Minnesota uh, uh, team in the first round. Those games were pretty close, uh, uh, especially that closeout game. Now, Denver prevailed in five games, but it, it, the games were closer than what the series would indicate. Then the second round, they had to go through the Phoenix Suns, Kevin Durant and, and uh, uh, Devin Booker. And then they had to go through LeBron James and Anthony Davis in the conference final. That's what you call a degree of difficulty. But when you eliminate that, well, see, the, okay, w when you stack the deck to oblivion, 
Well, what happens is you automatically know you got the conference on lock. So seating is not as important or held in high regard as it normally would be. Like in the West, seating is going to be of the utmost importance. And when you, when you start talking about seating, you start talking about home court advantage. See, see, when you stack the deck, man, this is what happens. You're 2,000 points more than the guy who won six championships? It's because he was allowed to stack the deck. That's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. Look, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar entered the league in 19... Let's see, 1969, right? He retired in 1989. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played 20 seasons, right? Right? And he was one of the most all-time prolific uh, scorers in playoff basketball, especially during his first 10 years in the NBA. And LeBron is sitting there almost 2,500 more points than Kareem in playoff basketball? It's all manipulation. It's all manipulation. See, and, 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 and what his fans got to understand is, man, there are basketball fans out there, man, who understand what competition is. I'm talking about, I'll put it this way. I'll put it this way. They witnessed it. They experienced it. They know what it looks like. They know what it feels like. When you stack the deck, man, that competitive framework is eliminated. When you say to yourself, man, we ain't got to worry about seating. We know we're going to run the table. Well, because of that, you may not play as hard during the regular season because it's not of no consequence. Where in contrast, the Chicago Bulls of 96, 1996, who won 72 games, their mindset was totally different. Their mindset was, no, we want to come out here and win every game. We don't want to, any opponent to feel like they got a chance. And then they had to take that same focus and determination and translate that into playoff basketball. And that's why they had such a historic season, man. As well as other teams, you know, uh, memorable uh, all-time uh, championship teams of this league. When you sitting there at the top of the list, man, 2,000 points more, man, that don't even make sense. And then from number two to nine, the difference between eight other players is 1,500. <laughs> it's called the art of manipulation. If he had not been in a position of being allowed to form those super teams, especially when it kicked off in Miami, he would be sitting there at the top of the list. To, he would be sitting there at the top of that list. It's just amazing, man. It's just amazing. I didn't know the, the differential was that great until I came across this uh, 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 graphic uh, today. So I just wanted to show it. So, I mean, just look at that. 8,000 points and the number two guy who won six championships, 5,987. So that number would suggest if you didn't really understand the history of the game, it will suggest that he he blows, he he is that far ahead of everybody else. That's what that number would suggest. If you're just looking at it for face value. But when you peel back the layers and you start, uh, 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 you know, uh, recalling and researching to identify all the talent that he's played with, well, it would easily explain why he made all those deep playoff runs. And with the A straight finals. To have Wade and Bosch on the same team, essentially two top five players and uh, three top ten players on the same team. No other team in the history of pro ball can say that. Not the Bulls, not the Chicago Bulls, not the Bad Boy Pistons. Not 
uh, Kobe and Shaq. They didn't have a, they didn't have a third guy who can score twenty points a game doing a three p. Now Kobe and Powell. Uh, now Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Not Giannis Antetokounmpo and Milwaukee Bucks. Even when uh, Steph Curry won the championship two years ago, leading Golden State to the title, he didn't have that. Dirk didn't have that when he won in 2011. Hakeem Olajuwon didn't have that when he went back to back in 94, 95. Showtime didn't have that. Showtime Lakers. And quietly the kill. Bird McKill Parrish didn't have that either. This is how he did it, man. This is how he did it. So, so like, on face value, it's going to look like that he's just far ahead above everybody else. But when you peel back the layers, man, and you and you really decipher what's going on, you understand how much this whole situation has been manipulated, man. So, basically, uh, what, what he... Uh, is, has attempted to do is try to put himself in a position to where number one, he would ensure all those play, those uh, run to the finals consecutively, and try to achieve all these um, uh, marks uh, where he he breaking all these these uh these uh records or or, uh, or uh, numbers. But was missing out of all of that is how he did it. Or, or the method that, or, or the means that he went about doing that, you know. And see, when, when you really, when you really look at it for face value, when you, when you really look at it for what it is, not face value, but what it is, it's really unfortunate because it distorts the history of the game. There is no distortion in the careers of those players, those other players on this list. None, because there's a realistic arc. There's a realistic. You can look at the numbers. You can say, "Wow, man, they're they're pretty close." You can look at that, but to be twenty one hundred points ahead of the number two person, man, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay, you look at in football. Your top home run, career home run hitters. You see a realistic differential there. You see a realistic differential. It's been a lot of great power hitters in the game of baseball. In football, but let's say, let's say the running back position. Like Emmitt Smith is the all-time leading rusher. But it's, he's not sitting there like four or 5,000 yards ahead of the next person. You see what I'm saying? And he won three Super Bowls in his career. Three and four years, as a matter of fact. But you still have Walter Payton sitting right there behind him. You still have Barry Sanders, uh, uh, Adrian Peterson. Uh, oh, man. Uh, Jerome Bettis. Uh, is it Martin? Uh, running back for the New York Jets. Uh, I always thought he was one of the more, more underrated running backs. Is it Ke uh, Kellen Martin? Uh, uh, Martin? Oh man, I wish I I can't think of his first name right now. It's real on the tip of my tongue, but he was one of, you know, he was one of your 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 unsung uh, uh, running backs. But you you look at that rushing mark, man. It's realistic, man. It's realistic. But that right there, no nah, man, no. Nah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. And, and see what this fan got to understand is, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, those who really hold dear the history of this game, man. And, and, you know, uh, and I'm not getting to no goat talk, who the greatest of all time. I ain't getting all that, man, because, you know, uh, they talk about that too much as it is around the clock. That's getting played out. It's getting played out. But, man, imagine if the Jordans and the Kobe's, man, or even the Carmelo, man. I mean, Carmelo always had Stockton, but they was ne they never had a super team. They never had a super team, but Carmelo right there in that top 10. Tim Duncan was not on the super. He, now, they may say a big three per se because they played together so long, but uh, 
Tony Parker wasn't like a twenty-five point per game score. He was one of your he was one of your your your, your top ever point guards. Manny Ginobili was a six man by nature, you know. Uh, but that wasn't no super team. It's just amazing, man. It's just amazing, man. And, and, and when I look at that, I just look at distortion. I look at distortion, and I look at manipulation when I see that. When I see this number right here, that's what I. That's what comes to mind immediately. And uh, this is why I'd be glad when this era of so-called player empowerment and stacking the deck uh, um, reaches the conclusion because there's a lot of distortion taking place, man. A lot of misrepresentation. A lot of things that would never happen otherwise. You know? Because when you look at that number right there, man, that's almost saying, that's almost saying, it would, it would indicate on face value that he was just that dominant and that he didn't have the help that he actually had. That's what that number signifies when you really sit there and think about it. Because they'll say, well, Jordan had Pippen. Yeah, he had Pippen. No doubt about that. But him and Pippen went through the wars, man. See, that's the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference. So, I just want to drop that real quick, man. I know maybe some of his fans may think I'm putting too much into this, man. But, but it is what it is. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. You would think by that differential being that great that he would have seven to eight championships. That he would have a winning percentage. You would, I mean, you would think that. A winning percentage in championship play. Wow, man. Wow. So I just want to drop that real quick, man. And, uh... Eight thousand. Uh, we'll never see this level of, of manipulation ever again. Um, it's not even feasible. It's not even appropriate, man. It's not even appropriate. And truth be told, it's not even realistic. It's not even realistic in the grand scheme of things. Like I said, I give him his first run to Cleveland because that's where he started. But from that point on, man, when you playing with two franchise players, a what? Because you go back to Cleveland, you playing with Kyrie. Kyrie was averaging 24, 25 a game the year before. Kevin Love was averaging 26 and 15. This last year in Minnesota, top three in PER. The best offensive rebounder in basketball. The best uh, Kevin Love was the best outlet passer in basketball. Michael Jordan had nothing like that. He had Horace Grant was a he was a good player. He played his role. He played he was he was a damn good defender and a good rebounder. He was a number three guy. Kevin Love was a top ten player in the NBA. Big difference, huge difference. That's who this guy's been playing with, man. That's why he sits the top of the list like that. So, until next time, this is JB for BTB. Wow, behind the bench.